When her husband is captured by an alien monster, a woman and her two children must travel into space to save him and reunite their family. Today we will recap the second season of the series, My Dad the Bounty Hunter, from 2023. In the first season of this story, Sean and Lisa discover that their parents are actually space warriors who fell in love and went to Earth with the aim of building a family, since they were in space for the first time. The children have come to see the world differently, which has caused strangeness among their teachers and classmates. Thanks to her children's strange behavior, Tess is invited to the school. When she arrives at the principal's office, she discovers that Sean has written a comic book recounting all the adventures he's had on other planets and his teacher asks for permission to publish it. At this point, Tess is terrified that her family's secret will be discovered and takes the sketchbook back. When she leaves school, she calls her husband to tell him what has happened. Since his last mission, Terry has given up his job as an intergalactic bounty hunter and taken a job in a shoe store. It's almost the end of his workday and his family is going to the mall to meet him. However, before leaving the store, he has to see his last customer and soon discovers that the guy is actually an alien in disguise. After handcuffing Terry, the creature attacks him, but the man manages to fight back and tries to squeeze the monster's neck. However, during the battle, he ends up being hit by a laser gun and passes out. When she arrives at the mall, Tess and the children spot a spaceship and the woman sees her husband being taken away. She immediately runs to rescue him, but the air current produced by the ship prevents her from reaching the enemy. After losing a member of their family, the trio return home and Tess begins to pack for a trip. When they receive the news that their mother is going into space, the children are excited, believing that they will also be able to take part in this adventure, but in reality they will be staying at home with their grandmother. Terry's mother has no idea what happened to him and believes that she will keep her grandchildren so that the couple can go on a romantic trip. However, after Tess leaves for the mission, the two youngsters wait for their grandmother to go to sleep and go to the garage to look for something that could take them into space. While searching the place, Sean finds a device and, after pressing a button, a gelatinous creature comes out of it. When he sees those children, Blobby is terrified, because the last thing he remembers is being captured by Sabo Brock. This is the alias Terry used when he worked as a bounty hunter. When he finds out that these are the children of the guy who captured him, the alien tries to run away, but Sean manages to bring him back by pressing a single button. With the promise that he will be freed if he helps the two brothers get into space, Blobby builds a spacecraft locator and manages to find a ship that is parked near that location. As the trio begin their journey into space, Tess arrives at Bucky's Diner, a space restaurant where one of Terry's latest targets used to hang out. In order to prevent her identity from being discovered, she wears a helmet to cover her face and talks to all the customers, offering a reward to anyone who reveals Krill's location, but no one knows where he is. Minutes later, she decides to go and talk to the waiter and discovers that her main suspect perished a few weeks ago. Suddenly, Glorlox approaches and rips off the woman's helmet, as it belonged to his former partner Sabo Brock. At that moment, the alien is surprised to discover that it is Tess who is standing in front of him and she ends up having her identity revealed. When they realizes that one of the galaxy's greatest fugitives is in the diner, all the other customers rush to capture her, because there's a big reward on offer for her. Seeing his former partner's wife in danger, Glorlox decides to help her escape and the two team up to attack the approaching enemies. Meanwhile, Blobby and the children arrive on the scene and park the ship. They're on their way to the diner when they run into their mother and have to flee before they end up being hit by countless shots. The group then manages to return to the ship and Glorlox flies away. However, they end up being followed and the children use the remote control to shoot at their enemies. After losing them, Sean and Lisa are scolded for disobeying their mother and Blobby introduces himself. On discovering that the family has gone there to save Terry, Glorlox says he will join them and Tess decides to go to the Bounty Hunter's Center to get more information. When they arrive at the conglomerate, Glorlox pretends to be a captured fugitive and the entire group is escorted to the prison, where Octopus Head meets other members of his old team. As Blobby is the only member of the team capable of hacking into the prisoner database, Lisa accompanies him to the control room while Glorlox goes to fill out his form before being sent to his cell. When he reaches the control room, the blue alien slips his gelatinous body under the door and manages to open it from the inside. Once inside, Lisa keeps watch while Blobby searches the computer. Meanwhile, Sean takes the opportunity to investigate Central and finds Pam presenting her latest project to a group of investors. With the help of a team of scientists, the woman managed to create the folding portal, capable of transporting any person or object from one corner of the universe to another. Pam's plan is to spread these portals throughout the galaxies and thus connect the entire universe. However, for this dream to come true, a huge source of energy is needed to activate the portals. At that moment, 
Glorlox is sitting in the waiting room waiting for Tess to fill out all the paperwork when a small alien approaches and claims to be his big fan. Zeitler says he admired Sabo Brock and was saddened when he heard he had been captured by a guy called Widowmaker. Upon hearing this, the octopus realizes that his old friend is not in the conglomerate and Blobby comes to the same conclusion after finding Terry's file in the prisoner database. When she receives the news that her husband is not being held there, Tess initiates an escape plan and, after taking down the guards with the help of Glorlox, they both flee through the corridors. At that moment, the pair find Sean, who has managed to escape after hearing the emergency alarm. The next challenge is to escape from a robot created exclusively to follow Pam's orders and which has been sent to eliminate the intruders. Luckily, when it passes through the waiting room, the creature is attacked by other prisoners, allowing Tess and Glorlox more time to escape. When they reach the parking lot, Blobby and Lisa appear and the group rushes to the ship. However, Glorlox decides to stay behind in order to free the former members of his team who are trapped there. Before saying goodbye, he goes over the information he received from Zeidler and tells him that Terry was taken by a hunter called Widowmaker. After escaping, the family heads to the Okanum Coast Casino, which is a safe haven for intergalactic criminals. When the group arrives at the venue, Tess and Blobby go shopping, as they know they need to be well-dressed in order to pass through security and enter the casino. Children are not allowed in the casino, so Lisa and Sean are sent to a nursery while their mother continues the mission. In an attempt to follow them from a distance, the boy places a hidden camera inside Blobby's body. This way, he and his sister can see everything that happens in the casino. As soon as she enters the establishment, Tess spots Widowmaker and, after buying some chips, walks over to the gaming table. At this point, Blobby is invited to a poker game and becomes desperate because he doesn't know how to play. What he doesn't realize is that Lisa is a great expert in this game and gives her alien friend the guidance to emerge victorious. After winning countless matches, Blobby manages to take all of Widowmaker's chips and the alien decides to quit the game because he's afraid of losing even more money. Then, when he gets up, Tess goes after him, but is surprised by an alien cat that has recognized her and orders its security guards to capture the woman. Despite being surrounded, Tess manages to get rid of the pigs easily and makes her way to her real target. However, Blobby isn't as lucky and ends up being captured. Seeing her friend in danger, Lisa decides to go and help him and calls her brother to accompany her. By this time, Sean is telling his stories to other alien children and, before leaving, he hands them his bounty hunter card. The kids soon find their mother and reveal that Blobby has been captured. So the woman must interrupt her mission to help her children save him. Meanwhile, the alien is being attacked to reveal Tess's whereabouts and, when the woman enters the ship, Philip's mother appears. Upon discovering that her son was trying to capture the woman, the alien orders him to release Blobby and apologize for his behavior. After saving her friend, Tess continues her search for Widowmaker and uses the money Blobby won in the poker games to bribe him. Now that he is surrounded, the lizard has no choice but to reveal the truth about Terry's whereabouts and tells him that the people who hired him to capture the man are from Delorum. At that moment, Terry is being interrogated by Odaman, the Emperor, who has brought him there to find out the whereabouts of his daughter. Fourteen years ago, Terry was hired to find Janira, the Princess of Delorum, and take her back to her home planet. However, that return never happened and he was accused of capturing her. Luckily, Yabolu, a public defender, appears before the jury with the aim of freeing the prisoner from losing his life as punishment. Now that she has discovered that her parents were responsible for her husband's capture, Tess has no choice but to tell her children the truth. Upon discovering that their mother is a princess, Lisa and Sean are thrilled to know that they are part of royalty, but are furious that they weren't told about it before. Faced with Terry's claim that Janira has escaped, Ya Bolu asks the Emperor to allow the accused to go through the fire challenges to have a chance of winning his freedom. After allowing himself to be subjected to these challenges, Odaman receives a visit from Pikaala, who has gone there to find out if his fiancé has been found yet. Even after 14 years, the Tiger Man is still interested in marrying the Princess of Delorum, as this union will ensure that he becomes the future ruler of the kingdom. After leaving court, Terry is taken to a cell where he meets other prisoners who were captured while trying to steal a crystal called Calatite. This mineral is produced only on Delorum and grows in the roots of the planet's trees. It possesses great power, which can only be used by the natives. Even so, creatures from all corners of the galaxy are interested in these crystals. Interested in this powerful energy source, Pam travels there on behalf of the conglomerate to negotiate the supply of calatite with the emperors. Hours later, Terry is sent to take part in his first challenge and has to fight a giant insect while trapped inside a circle of fire. Unexpectedly, the two adversaries start a dance competition, but when the man loses the contest, the creature attacks him. 
Terry then realizes that he will have to fight back and waits for the right moment to strike the insect and throw it out of the circle. In doing so, he wins the duel and is taken back to his cell. Now that she knows where her father is, Lisa feels relieved and asks her mother to change the ship's route to Delorum. However, the woman says she can't go back to her home planet and decides to pay a visit to the Abalon system to meet up with an old friend. When they get there, the group has to pass an inspection before entering and an image of their faces is recorded. After entering the nightclub, Tess meets Mike and asks him to take her to Aja, the owner of the place. When the two meet, Lisa and Sean discover that their mother's real name is Janira and wonder what else she has been hiding from them for all these years. While Tess and Aja go to a less noisy place to talk, Beta, Pam's robot, manages to locate them and redefines their route. When she arrives at her friend's quarters, Tess reveals that she has married the bounty hunter who was hired to take her back to Delorum and now her parents have captured him. While searching the place, Lisa finds a photo of her mother and Aja in an arena and the woman says that Tess was a great warrior. Upon hearing this, Tess claims that the Dolorami never lose their ability, so Aja challenges her to a duel. During the battle, Aja's body is covered in orange marks, caused by the Calamite's energy, and the children are impressed. The woman then tells her that Tess also had those marks, but now she can no longer access the power of that crystal and ends up being defeated. After the fight, Tess decides to get straight to the point and says she needs Aja's help to rescue Terry. Meanwhile, Sean and Lisa are captured by Beta and Blobby has his body broken in half when he tries to stop the robot from escaping with the children. That night, Emperor Otaman tries to talk to Terry once again and begs the bounty hunter to tell the truth about what happened to his daughter. Seeing the pain in the eyes of the father who had lost the person he loved most, the man decided to tell him the truth and said that he had married Janira. When she realizes what has happened to her children, Tess despairs, but Aja promises that she will help her rescue them. Just then, one half of Blobby appears and he reveals that his left side is trapped in the ship. When it concentrates, the creature can connect with its other half and see everything that the other part of its body is seeing. In this way, he manages to pass on to Tess the coordinates of the ship where the children are, but ends up being imprisoned in a cell together with Lisa and Sean. With this information in hand, the trio prepares for war and takes numerous Dolorami weapons from Aja's arsenal to accompany them on their journey. After breaking into the conglomerate, the trio use some grenades to disperse the guards and follow Blobby to the place where the two young people are being held. When she finds out about the invasion, Pam goes to investigate the origin of her prisoners and discovers that they are the children of the Princess of Dolorum. Meanwhile, Tess and Aja fight the guards who try to stop them from advancing and, together, they manage to take them all down. The real problem begins when Beta shows up and captures Tess. To save her friend, Aja hits the robot with an energy beam and it starts to short-circuit. When she realizes that the Kaladita is capable of destroying the enemy, Tess decides to distract it while Aja gathers a large amount of energy to attack the creature. However, the woman's plan is interrupted when her partner is immobilized and Tess has to flee while trying to reconnect with the crystal. When she finally manages to regain her powers, Beta attacks her with a laser beam, but Aja manages to get there in time to save her friend. After destroying the robot, the trio arrive where Lisa and Sean are and Tess is relieved to discover that her children are fine. At that moment, Blobby is reunited with his other half and the two come together to form a single body. Suddenly, Pam approaches and bows before the members of Dolorami royalty. That same day, she takes Tess back to her home planet and the emperors are perplexed to see their daughter after so many years. After hugging them, the woman introduces Lisa and Sean to their grandparents and Pam takes advantage of this moment of great emotion to remind the royals of the negotiation that is underway. Then Guerrera says that she will give her answer to the conglomerate that night and Tess asks where her husband is. At this point, the Empress feels confused, as she didn't know that Odaman had hired a bounty hunter to capture him. So the Emperor decides to tell his wife the truth and reveals that Terry has been in Dolorum all this time. Odaman immediately takes Tess and his children to meet the prisoner. When the whole family is gathered, he tells them that after he found out Terry was his son-in-law, he started treating him like royalty. Now that her daughter is back, Guerrera announces that she will organize a celebratory ball to announce the return of Princess Janira. During the celebration, the woman finally has the opportunity to talk to her parents about what happened and tells them that the reason she left was because they wanted to control every aspect of her life, including the person she was going to marry. Unhappy and tired of following orders, Janira decided to leave and adopted the name Tess so that she could build her own family on Earth. Just then, Bikala appears and is excited to discover that his runaway bride has returned. He then claims the marriage, but soon discovers that the princess has already built a family in recent years. Furious, the tiger defies the emperor and claims that the throne of Dolorami will be his. By the law of his country, 
Odaman is obliged to accept all challenges to the crown, so Terry sets out to take part in a duel against Bikaala on behalf of the emperor. That same day, the two challengers meet in the arena and Terry starts the fight at a disadvantage. As well as worrying about his opponent's attacks, he has to be careful not to lose his balance, as he is walking on wooden planks. However, after getting used to the challenges of the arena, Terry manages to take command of the battle and lands countless blows on his enemy. Just then, a Vunarian child has an accident and falls off the bleachers. The youngster clings to the wooden beams and Terry rushes to save her. While he's helping the little feline, Pikaala attacks him and takes advantage of this distraction to gain the upper hand in the fight. When he wins the duel, everyone present, including members of his own people, disapprove of his conduct. Ashamed of Pikaala's cowardly attitude, the Queen of Vunari abdicates the throne of Dolorum and claims that this individual does not represent her tribe. Hours later, the Empress realizes that her deadline is running out and asks Tess for her opinion on the conglomerate's offer. After hearing what the family has to say, Gurira goes to talk to Pam and thanks her for taking her daughter back home. As a token of her gratitude, the woman hands her a large amount of gold, but says she can't close the deal because the Kalatita is her people's most precious possession and cannot be sold. Just then, Pam opens a portal and a ship is transported to Dolorum. Out of it come thousands of robot soldiers who are there to destroy the people. Noticing the invasion, the royal family rushes into the palace and the emperors use the power of a large crystal to produce an energy shield that repels all approaching enemies. On Gurira's orders, Adja leaves the castle and goes to inform the people that a war is on the way. Immediately, everyone unites to protect their kingdom and uses the power of Kalatita to produce a force field around the entire planet. After picking up their best weapons, the warriors take to the streets to fight the enemy soldiers who have managed to invade. Before leaving the palace, the royal family divides into pairs and Tess is impressed by her mother's great battle skills. Meanwhile, Blobby tries to stop Lisa from sneaking out, as the girl can't wait to take part in the battle. As the alien refuses to let her go, Lisa uses the power of her necklace to free herself and, after grabbing one of the guns, runs into the war zone. After eliminating one of the robots, the young woman is almost crushed by a building that has just collapsed, but Aja manages to save her. Just then, Pam sends out a new wave of attacks and manages to break through the shield protecting the planet. Then Sean remembers the fold portal he saw while he was in the conglomerate and asks Blobby to help him destroy it. After entering the ship, the pair travel to the portal and manage to break into the structure in order to disable it from the inside. Together, they find the control panel and turn off the energy sources of the warp gate. However, on realizing what is happening, Pam sends Beta to stop them and Blobby loses consciousness after being attacked. However, before the robot could harm the boy, Bogdog appeared and managed to destroy it. Then Glorlox arrives with the rest of his team and the portal begins to short circuit. When the passage closes, the ship that was arriving on the planet is destroyed, but Pam's robots have already reached the Kality Demines. While they are stealing all the crystals, Sean contacts his mother and informs her that Pam is the one controlling the robots. When she finds out, Tess decides to go after her and Aja goes to the mines with the mission of stopping the robots. During the battle, Lisa manages to access her great power and eliminates her opponents with the help of the crystals. When she realizes that she is losing the war, Pam sends new enemy ships to exterminate the Dolorami. Just then, Bikaala contacts Tess and reveals where Pam's ship is. Even though it has done terrible things in the past, the tiger's intention was to rule that planet and not see it destroyed. So he helps the people get rid of the enemy army and Tess finally manages to find the evil mind that is orchestrating the whole attack. Immediately, the woman attacks her and all the robots under her control collapse. After immobilizing Pam, Tess rips out the chip implanted in her head and manages to eliminate her. Now that their leader has been destroyed, the remaining soldiers decide to flee and the entire enemy army retreats. After Pam loses consciousness, her ship crashes into a valley, but Tess manages to survive the fall. Suddenly, the woman senses the presence of someone around her and, on investigating, finds only the skin of her enemy. Suddenly, a bizarre crocodile attacks her and Tess is able to see Pam's true appearance. As the place is full of roots, there is a huge amount of Kalatita around and the warrior must figure out how to access it. Since returning to her home planet, this is the first time she has been able to use the power of that crystal and yet the monster manages to capture her. When she is about to be devoured, the princess emits a burst of light and cuts the crocodile's body in half with her necklace. After leaving the swamp, Tess is found by her family and, a month later, they all return to Earth. The woman is anxious about the preparations for the party at her house, where her parents will be the guests of honor. For the first time, the family is visited by aliens and the children are happy to finally have all their family and friends together in one place. So what did you think of this movie? Leave it in the comments below.
and if you like the video, like and subscribe for more movie recaps. See you next time.